Alrighty, so the next piece we need to look at for composite figures is what if we put solid pieces together? So the different kinds of solids that you've seen before are pyramids and prisms, pretty much. So here we go. In these problems, we will also want to know something called the lateral area. So you've probably already talked about volume, which is the amount of space an object takes up. You've probably talked about surface area, which is the area of every single, all of the surfaces of an object all added together. Well, lateral area is going to be just the sides. So imagine I had a box. So I'm going to, for example, I have a tissue box. So surface area would be the area of every single surface all over the place. Lateral area is only going to be the sides. So if I'm holding my um, tissue box this way, the lateral area will be the left side, the right side, the front and the back, and that's it. It would not include the top and the bottom. So just the sides going around. If you're dealing with something like a pyramid um, or a cone, which unfortunately I don't have a sample with that. Again, you're just looking at those tilted sides. You're not worried about the bottom part for lateral area. Surface area is everything. Lateral is just the sides. So lateral area is area of only the sides, not the base or bases. Because when you're dealing with something like a prism, like that very first, those first two shapes, technically you have two bases. You have the top side, which is a triangle, and then you have the same exact triangle on the other side. Both are considered bases. Same thing when you're looking at a cylinder. You have the circle on the top. You have the circle on the bottom. Those are your two bases. And then you've got your sides going around. So first, let's practice a little bit with just doing your straight out calculations. So example five, we're going to find the lateral area and surface area of that triangular prism. The reason I know it's triangular is what two sides do you see that are exactly the same size and shape? Only two of them. Uh, the front and the back triangle. There we go. So let's just borrow our formula from the formula page and fill stuff in as we can figure out. So first off, let's look at our lateral area. So lateral area on our formula page and up at the top of the sheet equals HP. So what this means is we need the height of the overall figure. In other words, the distance between the bases. And then we need the perimeter of the base. So we have a problem because our base, which is our triangle, do we have enough information to figure out the perimeter of that triangle? We're missing one of the sides, aren't we? So we need to know this side here in order to keep going. Well, wait a second, what kind of triangle is that actually showing? Oh, we have a right angle on the corner. So if it's a right triangle, can I use any right triangle info to solve for a missing side? Ah, that's the first rule we did with right triangles. I can use Pythagorean theorem to find that extra side. So I can do three squared plus four squared equals the side I'm looking for is the hypotenuse C squared right across from that right angle there. And so, and we just start solving it out. And does this combination of numbers actually look familiar to you? Huh, that came out as a five. Hey, it's a three, four, five triangle. That's one of those reasons we spent time on doing those Pythagorean triples. Alrighty, so now we have enough information. So again, the H in the lateral area is the distance going between the bases. So for lateral area, that means it's actually going to use the six meters. Okay, perimeter is going to be the three plus the four plus the five. And never a bad idea to write out your steps, plug everything in in that first go and then simplify. Don't try to simplify everything all in that first step. If nothing else, writing it out this way will get, let you go back and check your work if you get a problem incorrect and you can see exactly how you set it up and what pieces you might need to edit. Now I'm going to simplify. So go ahead and add together the three, four, and five. So that gives me a 12. 
And six times 12 is going to give me 72. Technically it is an area and our units were meters. So that means that area should be, actually let me give myself a little extra room here. Whoops. Apparently I need to rewrite that. So height was six, three plus four plus five. That gives me six times 12, which equals 72 and its area. So it's meters squared. So there's our lateral area. So now let's do our surface area. So surface area formula is HP plus two big B. Well, wait a second, we already figured out HP. So we just need to know what the big B is. And again, if you look at your variables listed out on the top, big B stands for area of the base. Well, that's that red triangle that we have shaded in. Doesn't matter which one you're referencing because they're the same triangle. So all I need to do is figure out that area of the base. How do we find the area of a triangle again? Yeah, that's just one half times the base and height of just the triangle. So that means we're gonna look at whatever HP is plus two times the area of our base, which is one half times three times four. Simplify it out and we're ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the answer we got for HP, which was 72 plus, I can just multiply them straight out. So two times 0.5, well, those actually cancel each other out, right? So we really need just to do three times four, which is 12. And so 72 plus 12 gives us 84. Again, it's an area, so meters squared. And so think about that. Your lateral area is just supposed to be the sides. Surface area is everything. So surface area should always be the larger value. Alrighty, let's look at number six. Let me move my video screen a bit. Okay, number six, find the surface area and volume. So again, are there any pieces that you think we might need to figure out some labels for? So before I even look at my formulas, I'm thinking, well, it might help to have the height of this figure. I have this slanted piece, which is listed as 15, and I have the nine, which is the radius of the bottom, but I don't know what the height of the overall figure is. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So what kind of triangle is it? I can use Pythagorean theorem again. So h squared plus nine squared equals 15 squared. So simplifying out, let's see, 15 squared gives me a 225. Subtract the 81. So 225 minus 81 gives me 144. Hey, very nice number, h is 12. So I'm gonna relabel that as 12 centimeters. And now I know everything about that cone that I can. So I can go back and look up my variables or my formulas and start plugging stuff in. So let's see here, surface area of a cone, the formula says pi r squared plus pi r l. Wait a second, let's see, new variable and there's the l. But if we look back up at our formula, Here's the L, that little slanted piece. We already have that labeled, so we can plug that in. Okay, so that's the L. Let's plug in what we know. So the radius of the figure was nine plus pi times nine times our slant height, 15. So we just need to simplify. So nine squared is gonna give me 81. And again, I'm just gonna write that as 81 pi for now plus, see nine times 15 gives me 135. And because both of these are just a variable pi and a number like an X, let's just do 81 plus 135. That gives me 216 pi. That's a very exact answer that I don't have to round off. But again, if the problem said, you know, round your answers to the nearest hundredth, then you might wanna go ahead and multiply that out. So doing that, I'm going to get times pi on my calculator, 678.58. And since it's an area, that's centimeters squared. 
So that's my surface area. Either one of these would be a valid solution. Okay. They also wanted us to find volume. Formula for volume, according to the formula sheet, one third pi r squared h. We have everything we need. So one third times pi, our r squared is nine squared. And our height we figured out was 12. Multiply it all out. So I'm going to do 9 times 9 is 81 times a 12 and divide that by 3. All of that comes out to 324 pi. But again, if the problem said leave your answer to the nearest hundredth, then you want to go ahead and multiply that by pi and you will get approximately 1017.8. And I'm going to round to 8. Units on here were centimeters. On volume, since we did three dimensions multiplied together, we need cubed in our exponent. So again, either one of those would be appropriate. Alrighty. So our last two, yep, last two problems. So composite figures. One of these we're going to find the volume, one we're going to find the surface area. So again, the idea of a composite figure is just putting together things that you know about to make a different shape. So what kind of shapes do you see in number seven? Okay. Number seven, I see a cube on the bottom. And again, I know it's a cube because all those edges are labeled as an eight. And then on the top, it looks like a pyramid. And again, we have one piece of information on here. We have this kind of slanted height. However, for the volume of a pyramid, I'm going to need to know the real height of this shape. So I actually need to figure out this length for the dotted line I'm drawing in. And if I draw it straight to the center and then go out, what kind of shape am I making? I'm making another right triangle. These just keep popping up in these kinds of figures. So to find that height, I really need to solve the problem. This is h. See, what's the length on the bottom of that little triangle going to be if it goes halfway through the square? That's going to be 4. So h squared plus 4 squared equals the hypotenuse 5 squared. Recognize the pattern? If not, keep going on the math. Okay, subtract the 16 from both sides. Therefore, h has to equal 3. All righty. So now I know the height of both figures, and I know what kind of sizes we have on the bases. So volume problem. So I need to do the volume of the pyramid plus the volume of the cube. So I just need to look up both formulas and plug in what I know. So for the pyramid on the top, I'm looking at, it's the very last formula on your formula sheet, or it's this guy up at the top. So volume equals one third area of the base times height, big B times H. Okay. So one third big B times H for the pyramid plus the cube. How do we find the volume of any cube? Length times width times height. And again, each of these measures has to be just for that figure. So we're not kind of mixing and matching these. Alrighty, so here we go. What kind of shape is on the bottom of the cube? Excuse me, on the bottom of the pyramid? Yeah, it's a square, but it's the same size square as the bottom. So that means the sides on it to find the area of the base are just going to be eight times eight. The height of the pyramid, we just solved out to be three. On the cube, all the edges are eights. So that's just eight times eight times eight. So all I need to do is multiply things together and simplify. However, I have a really nice thing happening in that first one. What happens, I'm gonna have a one third and eventually multiply by a three. What's the one third gonna do to the three? Gone, canceled out. And so really, I just need to multiply together eight times eight, which gives me a 64 plus, 8 times 8 times 8. I need my calculator for that one. That should give me 512. Makes sense. That's from the cube. It should be bigger than the pyramid. It has more space inside it. And so add those together. 
gives me 576. They didn't give us any units on this one, so I'm just going to say units cubed. So again, all we did was put the volumes together. So then number eight is a little trickier. This one's asking us to find the surface area. So again, surface area really means the area of all the surfaces all on the outside of the figure. So let's think about this. We have two figures in here. You've got the cylinder that's on the left-hand side. And we know a lot about the cylinder. We know that you know, the length along, or technically, because it's between the two circles, technically this is the height of that cylinder is 50. If we go six all the way around, all the way through the diameter of the circle, what does that mean the radius needs to be? That needs to be three. So then wait a second, doesn't that mean that the cone is gonna have the same radius? Okay, so let's write that in. And then the only other dimension or measurement in here that's not labeled is this guy, which I could go ahead and label that if I want. And do you recognize the pattern yet? Yeah, we've already seen it two times on these set of examples alone. That's actually a four. And so that would be the height of the cone. So we have to kind of tweak our formulas to make it work for this one. So there are a couple different ways we could do this. So we could play around with our lateral areas and our surface areas. And actually, let's look at those formulas and see what happens. So on the left-hand side, I have a cylinder. I want to use the surface area of the cylinder, but do I want to use all the surfaces? No, I do not want to use this common. Let me change my color. I don't want to use this circle that's kind of overlapping between the cone and the cylinder. So I want to subtract one of those circles. So I'm just going to write a note for myself so I know how I have to build my formula. And then the right hand piece, we have the cone, but we only want to use those kind of tilted sides on it. So do we actually want to use the surface area or do we just want to use the lateral area? Well, let's just use the lateral area. So lateral area cone. And so let's look up our formulas for each one of these. Okay, so surface area of a cylinder, again, according to the formula sheet, which I actually have up on another screen right now, surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Okay, minus, I want to take out one of those circles. So minus the area of one circle, so it's pi r squared. Then the lateral area of a cone, again, just looking it up on the formula page, I do not have these memorized. Lateral area of a cone is pi r l. So again, all we have to do is fill in the information that's already on the diagram. Here we go. So red piece, two pi r, okay, so two times pi times radius squared is three squared plus two times pi, again, we already know our radius is three, and what's the height of the cylinder? And we have that marked as 50. Okay, then we have to take away that common green circle. So minus pi times radius squared, what's the radius of the green circle? Yep, that's three. And then we have our lateral area of our cone, pi, radius of the cone is the same thing as the rest of the figure, is a three. And then what does L stand for again? Yeah, that's that slanted height. So that's the five that's there. Now let's go through and simplify. Here we go. I'm noticing something though. Look here, just to make my life a little easier. What do you notice in common between those two terms I just underlined? So the first one says two pi three squared. And the second one says, pi 3 squared. The only thing that's changing up is I have two of those at the very front of the formula, and I just have one of them subtracted in the green. So actually, what I could do if I wanted to, if I subtract one of these out, it's going to leave me with just a single pi 3 cubed or squared. Now, if you don't see that type and just multiply everything out, you will still get exactly the same answer. I'm just trying to save myself a little bit of time in the long run. Alrighty, so 
pi times three squared is really a nine pi, three squared is nine. Then I've got two times three times 50 from that second term. So that's 300 pi. We don't have to worry about the green anymore. So purple three times five is gonna give me 15 pi. So I can take this whole thing, actually, let me change to a new color to show that we're on a new step. So this whole thing, if I add the nine, the 300 and the 15, so nine plus five, excuse me, nine plus 300 plus 15, I'm getting 324 pi. Or if the problem said, hey, round your answer to the nearest hundredth, go ahead and just multiply it out on your calculator. So 324 times pi. And again, I'm using always using the pi button on my calculator. I'm going to round to two decimal places. It's a surface area, and any area is going to be units squared. So again, either of these would be a correct answer. All right, so your practice for today is actually an activity. It will lead you through finding a fairly complicated um, composite figure with surface area and volume, but it's going to take you step by step through the process. As always, if you try it out and you get stuck, let me know and ask me to pop into your breakout room. Talk to you soon.